Hey folks, Quillian here, and welcome to another episode of our Let's Play of the pre-release version of Pillars of Eternity. We've just uh, made camp, we've rested, and we're continuing to explore these ruins that we've been forced into when escaping a sort of weird supernatural storm. And apparently we're going to be fighting some more spiders. Um, we've got a spear spiderling, and we have a fully grown spear spider over here, but luckily a famished version, which is presumably weaker than a How regular one. Now that Heowedin is no longer exhausted, it might uh, indeed be fine for him to be mailing once more. Um, so we'll probably do something like that. We've also got our spells well, back as uh, Delures, which might be worth mentioning. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, what is it? get this battle started. We'll let the first bow well, shot go, and then we'll transform ourselves. We've got to wait for the cooldown to finish. The transformation is instantaneous, but there is that little cooldown. And it looks like we've got... Uh, did we crit? Oh, Heowedin crit. 13 slash damage. The screen shook with his mighty crit damage. So we'll go ahead, let's say, equal 105. Oh, 105 is the hit. Yeah, all right, good. Curse your the way it works is you roll one to 100 for your attacks. You add your accuracy, you subtract their deflection. And uh, depending on what you get, might be a hit, might be a graze. If you somehow end up with over 100, you will crit. So we got some spider legs, and it looks like we've got some sort of lootable over here. We've got a rapier and a bloodstone. Worth 25 copper pieces. Traditional the dark stone, often deep green, but in the presence of pockets of iron or red jasper resembling blood spatter gives the stone its name as well as value. All right, let's grab well. all that. Uh, oh, there's a bit more to explore over here. Let's go ahead and check it out. Got another body to loot. It's got a helmet. This helm has no combat value whatsoever. We can put it on for visual purposes or we can just leave it off. And we got some jasper and agate, agate, something, I don't know over here, and it looks like we finished uh, exploring this place. Looks like there's nothing over here. All right, out we go. Prepare yourself for a cutscene. Yeah, and I've played through this intro before, so spoiler alert. Four robed figures stand silhouetted before an otherworldly apparatus, an ancient structure of chiseled audra and metallic veins, inscrutable and ominous and looming like a silent observer. Standing motionless in their midst of, is what appears to be a human body, colorless as stone, right here, or ash. The other figures gaze upon it in what might be contemplation. From your vantage point, you are well obscured from their view. The face of one of the figures is distantly visible, framed by long tendrils of oily gray hair tinged dark at the ends, and a thick beard that seems to obscure all traces of emotion. His faded robes are embroidered with a runic language unlike anything you have seen, uh, and his head is crowned with a strange black headdress with two protrusions jutting out, one on either side like the wings of some profane and malevolent creature. Oathbinder bear witness. And see, this man has kept his word true to his last breath, full to his blood's last drop. Guide his soul, queen that was, and regard it among your favored. Let his life by the key be his confession. Let his death by the key be his absolution. May he walk the world ever free of the crushing weight of the book. I don't know what these words mean. This might be the key, though. Your brother has done his part. You have seen the power of his contribution. I will accept no further hesitation from the rest of you. In the sight of the queen that was, will you fulfill the oath? Will you take your place beside your brother in the endless esteem of her memory that is without flaw? Step forth and be assured of the great worth of your life's course. Ooh, it's spinning. For an instant, the apparatus goes quiet and the air is still. Then, all at once, it erupts with a concussive surge. Light floods your vision and you're knocked to the ground. Your head snaps back as you land. The pain wells into the back of your skull, washing your last thoughts away into the black, unconscious void. You open your eyes to a different place, another time. You stand in a circular room, grand and domed, its walls lined with audra and trimmed with copper. The style is ancient, but the chamber is unweathered. At the far end of a... 
At the far end, a great pillar of Audra pierces the floor from below like a ragged spike, its shimmering texture giving the illusion of boundless depth. Encircling the pillar is an apparatus much like the one you have just seen, but immense and multifaceted and intertwined, the work perhaps of a prodigious but fevered mind. Your thoughts are yours and not yours, and they seem to exist before you think them, and they are all questions, pressing questions, troubling questions, questions that must be answered, or, or. At the base of the pillar now, you see a man with a thick gray beard in ceremonial robe, his oily hair tucked beneath a black cowl and a strange ornamental headdress. You know this man. You are walking towards him now at a pace that is hurried while trying not to appear so. You have something you want to ask him, one question above all, and the question spins madly in your mind. I guess we won't get it answered, or even asked. The question that must never be asked. The first question. Doctor Who! Sorry. Back to the story. Uh, you awaken to find your malaise is broken, only to be replaced with something far more concerning. Faint whispers are audible at the edge of your hearing, like a ringing in your ears that does not subside. Movement flits through your periphery, but when you look, you turn to look, you can see no sign of whoever, whatever it was. You find your gaze regularly darting this way and that, an involuntary paranoid tick. If this is a sickness, it may be dangerous to go without treatment for long. The figures at the machine stand frozen in place, flesh and blood replaced by cinder and ash. The man who led them is nowhere to be seen. Hewden and Kalissa lie bloody on the uneven cobbles, their bodies twisted unnaturally in death. You are alone and far from help. Gilded Vale may be your best hope of receiving treatment before things get worse. Boo! We lost our companions. I really like Kalissa too. It actually makes me super sad. Never really got to know Hayden. Um, I don't think I need... Oh, you know what? I'll take the potions. That certainly makes sense. But the rest, I'm just going to go ahead and bank in the stash. And actually, I should probably go and stash some of this other stuff I'm not wearing as well. I accidentally picked up a bunch of this stuff up myself, and I really don't want to do that. Keep the potions. Put that one on the quick items list. Uh, we've got this tattered journal, which I actually don't need either. We can go ahead and stash that. I'm going to switch to my primary weapon set over here, just because if I do get engaged in melee now, I mean, I'll still go into bear form, but just in case. And we have leveled up. Boom. We are now level two. So we can now put some points into our skills. We have level three survival. I think we got two from being a druid and then one from something else. I don't remember what it was. This is helping our, our consumables last longer. <clears throat> We've got one rank in stealth, one in lore, no athletics or mechanics. Now it is worth noting that right now it costs one point to advance, but every time you advance it, the cost to advance goes up and this doesn't reset by level to level. So ultimately you might end up spreading them out a little bit. I'm tempted to put some more points in stealth um, just because we do a lot of stealthing. Athletics is also pretty good because it lets you absorb more fatigue before you get tired and again have to rest, uh, which is quite good. There's also a lot of situations where having like one level in things might help. You know, we might want to go ahead and put like one level in mechanics, one level in athletics. Um, certainly, like mostly specializing is good. Like, we can be the person in our group that supplies the survival and, you know, can pass all the survival checks, for example. That's pretty strong. But what I think I might do is something like this. Level 3 stealth. Um, so put two points in survival, two points in stealth, or two levels, basically. Cost one and two, one and two. So that's what my six points to spend. And then in the future, we'll probably keep putting survival up. We're going to try to get uh, various people in our party specialized so that we always have someone in the group who has a high stat in something that can do something. And I'll mostly take the survival slot. It's only five skills. We're going to have up to six people in the party. So um, there'll be a little bit of overlap. And we get to pick our first talent. Now, Every few levels, you get to add a talent. There's four categories. Utility, defensive, and offensive are the same for everyone. And then there's class-specific ones. Um, and they cover a lot of different things. Offensive give me, say, I could take Weapon Focus Knight, which gives me a bonus to accuracy with battle axes, swords, morning stars, and crossbows. I don't think that makes much sense as a druid because I are bear. Um, technically, I am two-handed style. When I go into bear form, I think this dual wield would help because I, I've got a... It equips a claw into each one of my hands. So technically, this would give me a 20% speed boost to clawing people to death as a bear. That's pretty good. But what else we got? Grant Wildstrike Burn. 
The druid's knowledge of the forces of nature allow him to, or her to automatically inflict additional burn damage when your spirit shifted. Okay, rather than taking a 10%, or sorry, a 20% attack speed boost, um, I could just get 30% bonus damage. 30% is bigger than 20%. Like, 20% faster means 20% more damage, right? But this is just, that's a lot more. Also, I like the fact that it's burned so that we can mix up the type of uh, attacks that get hit. Remember, they can also choose corrode, freeze, or shock. And quite curious when we level up again is, can I keep stacking these? Or is there like a greater burn? Do different types of class specific talents unlock? Now, I'm not necessarily, ooh, look at that cloak. Um, <sighs> melee attack is not necessarily my, my primary role though in combat. Yes, I'm very beastly as a druid. I don't have a lot of hit points, so I don't always want to go into melee. What else could we get? Uh, not offensive. Defenses. Hold the line gives you more engaged ability to lock people down. We can bonus us to one of our saving throws. Weapon and shield style. Great, Graceful retreat lets us disengage better. No, I don't care about that. Um, I don't think the movement speed is important. This is interesting. We get better damage reduction from burn and do more burn damage. I think these are more like if you were a straight up spellcaster, but we do a lot of that. Now, we don't have any fire damage. Uh, we do, however, have one that does frost, right? More freeze damage. Quick switch between weapon changes and also your grimoire swapping. Wound binding. Once per rest, I can... Ooh. Actually, and this is health. This is not endurance. This is health. That's pretty good. Or I could use it on someone else for not quite as much, but it gives you more flexibility. You could have a few people with field triage in your group. Um, wow, well, that's really good. But I think I'm going to go ahead and get one of these um, melee damage ones. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to get Corrode because I feel like I've got lightning spells, freeze spells. Certainly wizards will probably have fire spells. I don't know how much Corrode there is. So I'm going to take this just because I think it's going to stand out a little bit. So we've got, I don't know, venom or something on our claws. Some sort of acid maybe, I suppose. Yeah, I guess it's acid. Um, and it'll just let me bear people a little bit better. And I like that. So we're going to take it. Especially being alone right now. Every time we get close to someone, they die. Oh, we got an extra first level casting. And trippy vision. Oh, I know I shouldn't have dropped that acid. Talking about corrosion. Some sort of thing. We can just walk directly through. Uh, oh, there's a plant up here. Actually, was there another plant over here anywhere? Hope, I hope I didn't miss one. Let's go ahead and loot this plant. And click on this vessel. We got some vessel flesh. Mostly disintegrates. Ooh, lots of um, trippy vision. Some sort of campfire over here. But again, it just goes away when you walk through it. I could check out the machine. Massive structure is formed of stone, audra, and copper and covered in strange glyphs. The air around it vibrates with unusual energy. What if I, like, walk right up to it? Poke, poke, poke. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay. Another plant down here. Alright, and it looks like mostly what I have to do now is probably... Probably just leave. World map! Again, if you've played Baldur's Gate, this sort of idea should be relatively familiar to you. Uh, my understanding is that this game has slightly more um, maps and screens than the original Baldur's Gate. Maybe slightly fewer than Baldur's Gate 2 with all the expansions, but still quite a bit. So we were here, we're going to go down to Valewood. Ultimately, we're going to the Gilded Vale. At least for our first mission. It's going to take six hours to complete the trip. That should be fine. And we are all alone. Survival skill used to identify plants, creatures, other knowledge of the natural world, and conversations and scripted interactions. Walk, the more likely you'll have to sleep. I am tired. Major fatigue. Minus 10 to all defenses. Minus 20 accuracy. And a penalty to our endurance. So maybe we'll camp now before we run into anyone. It's the last of my camping supplies, though. Whoa! And we're getting a trippy dream. All right, some Audra on the back. Purple lights and swirls. And that's about it. Okay, so we camped. We are now rested. No damage to heal, but we had to get rid of that fatigue status. More camping supplies, good. Some leather armor, which I don't care about because that's already what I'm wearing. Just wondering. Oh, is there. There's a shadow. There's a ghost. Did you guys see that? There's a little ghost spirit. A little blood moss, okay. 
I guess we're going down this path. I like how the opening the map doesn't actually pause the game, so you can navigate that way a little bit easier. I wonder if I should go into stealth mode. Well, I'm gonna fight it. Oh! Another spirit! Look at that! We're running off. Get some river reed. Can I not loot this body? Should probably follow the path, but no, I want to explore some more. We got some mushrooms of some kind over here. Oh, and a wolf! Alright, Wolfie. You're gonna get bared. Just hit it for what, 34? That's amazing. It's hitting me for one and a half a point. I'm hitting it for 34. You're goddamn right. Some of which... Yeah, there we go. So I actually hit it. It says slash damage here, but if you mouse over, it's actually 26.7 slash plus 7 corrode. Very nice boost in damage. Settler's arrow. What does this say? Is that a sign? Shattered pieces of crate are strewn across the dirt along with a few muddy vegetables. Sounds like another caravan got attacked. It looks like we can leave here. I'm going to click on it just in case it exposed anything else, but it didn't. Nope, we got some stuff to loot over here. More camping supply, a little bit of money. So it looks like a panned is what they call a, a coin. I guess penny. Oh, and a campground. Hello, Naunton. Who are you? Greetings. On your way south, is it? He looks pretty nervous. Oh, he's dismantling his camp. The sooner you clear these woods, the better. Hmm. Um, Caravan was attacked, trying to get to the Gilded Vale. I don't think I want to talk to anyone about the strange machine. Not until I know more about it. I feel that my character is a little bit secretive. Doesn't necessarily trust people all the time. Um, what's your hurry? What's your hurry? Found a tent. I mean to follow my own advice. Came out here in a hunt, me and a friend of mine. Thought we'd bring a stag home. Eat something other than bread for once. Came up on a bear instead. Great monstrous thing. And Pearly, he didn't make it. I don't know what I'll tell his wife. In case, uh... Who are you? Naunton. Born and raised Gilded Vale. I haven't had a spot of luck since. Luckier than Pearly, I suppose. Uh, where did you find this bear? In a cave. Uh, ways up that way. He turns and points northwest. Did I miss a cave? I wouldn't seek it out if I were you. It was a great brute of a beast. We'd hate to hear that it took another life. Come to your friend. Didn't see it coming. Following a stag. Saw something in the brambles. Went tearing off after it. We stumbled after the cave. Alright. Well, let's pick that. Did I miss a bear cave? Oh, I missed an area up here that I can go to. Oh, let's do that. Double speed! Vroom. And I mean, I realize there's some stuff over here too. We'll check out in a second. Do, do, do. No longer double speed. Okay, another area we can leave. Some plants over here. Ah, there's a cave. So let's go ahead and hit F5 for a quick save. There we go. Just in case we get actually eaten by a bear. I mean, I'm a bear, but it's a bear. There's the bear. Good bear. Hey, I can charm it. How long does this last? 42 seconds. I might not have to actually fight it. Now, I can't cast it outside of combat. I'll have to enter combat first. Then char- Uh, ooh. It's an area. Okay, let me go into bear form. Okay, I'm gonna have to aim it properly here. Like that. Be charmed. Have your eyes for that one. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, let's load from an auto save. He hit me for 55. So, yeah, it does take three seconds to cast a spell. You won't see me coming. Won't see me coming. Now, if I had, I do have level three stealth. I wonder if that's going to be enough. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, well, we'll have to come back at some point in the future. <laughs> yeah, okay. No fighting bears. Apparently they are really, really dangerous. Who would have thought? Oh! Zorups. Oh, and these won't negotiate. Alright, let's find out how bad they are. Um, which one of these had like a huge area of effect damage thing? Oh, the dancing bolts. Dancing bolts is pretty good. 
No prisoners. Whoa. Okay. Insta heal. Uh, insta heal. No, stop moving. You're disengaging and taking a bunch of extra damage for no good reason. Drink potion. Son of a bitch. I kept moving instead of drinking the potion. That being said, I am all alone. As it may wish. be wise to wait until I have a bigger party and then come back and clear this. We'll say this about this game. It, it's not, you know, strictly out. linear in how they uh, present some of this stuff. Um, you do have to... Uh, you do have to be a little bit cautious about how you do things. Gonna hobble some of them. Let's try it again. Whoa, I can get really close with the stealthiness. On these guys, they're not very attentive. Bear mode. Fair mode. So I, I, I have to do it in combat. I have to wait for the cooldown to happen. Oh yeah, that's particularly bad. And then I'm hoping... Oh, let's use a roar. Still alive. Which should Still debuff alive. their damage. And then see if we can kill them. This is actually probably altogether kind of stupid. Especially since they could be interrupting my attacks. Alright. That's a little bit better. But... You can see why, if I was playing on any higher difficulty, and especially if I was playing on the roguelike mode where losing your main character resets your save, this could be particularly bad. Add some spears, some tongues, let's all just stash that. Loot some body over here, but yeah, we're not going to do too much else around here. Padded helmet, quarterstaff. So it's important large enough to be the ribs and vertebrae of a dragon. Wait, there are dragons in this game? I'm actually not sure if I was aware of that. All right. Let's, uh, we're gonna come back here. We're gonna put a bookmark on that bear. We're gonna see about exploring the other side of the map over here, though. Let's put a quick save in. An outlaw. Alright. If you're alone, you're dead. I'm a bear. You are not a bear. You hit me for one point of damage. I hit you for lots of damage. Oh, okay, that's a lot of outlaws. Now, they're not aggro at this time. Who's this? I have, I have not actually seen this before. We might be able to talk our way out of it. That person actually has a name. Don't rush me. Oh, this guy's nervous. Maybe he's in trouble. Maybe he was over in the sharp... Ooh, hold on. <coughs> All right. Let's go ahead and engage. Oh, please help me. I may skip the first one accidentally. I was trying to pause. One of the bandits gives him a kick. All right, well, we will help you by being a bear. Now, we can roar again. It's a foe-only AoE centered on me. Let's do one attack first while the other one comes a little closer. There we go. Then we can rev up for the roar. There we are. And then we're going to go back to attacking them. Taking a fair deal of damage... So far, we're okay. I'm a little get. I'm getting a bit concerned. I could maybe just nuke them with a spell. Let's use the sunbeam. I have to make sure not to hit myself. And the yellow area is fine. Oh, did my bear form run out? I'm pretty sure I can cast spells in. Oops, in uh, bear form. I think it might have just expired. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Hmm. Use another sunburst. Don't kill me. Alright. I mean, I could drop a heal. I think I can hopefully finish this guy off. Luckily, I'm wearing armor so now. Much for Whew. You. Okay, that was really intense. I've taken some actual health damage. Not too much. Let's first loot these bodies. Cape. Just a visual thing. Some silver bits. Alright. We can just stash them. Let's talk to this fellow. Gods keep you. By the flame. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I thought I'd be stuck cooking for these ignorant weasels for the rest of my life, or until they were bored with me, I suppose. 
Must get back home. I only hope they haven't hired a replacement. The dwarf looks aghast. Listen, next time you're in the Gilded Vale, stop by the Black Hound Inn. I'll let Pasha know just what you've done for me, and I'm sure she'll do right by you in turn. Oh, to be back by my oven again. Okay, so I, didn't, I thought he might have been a recruitable, but apparently he's not. Oh, we got some vegetables. So if we eat this for 150 seconds, we get a bonus to our max endurance and perception. And because of my survival skill... Oops, I should leave it... Um, in here, because of my survival skill, it for me it would actually last 262 seconds. Uh, so 180 seconds is three minutes. So it did quite a long time. 300 seconds is five minutes. So I guess just over four minutes. That's not bad. Some rice, even more endurance. See, we're gonna make use of this with our survival ability. Poultry, ready for the pots. Not cooked yet. We might still make use of it. Meat. The coins don't matter, and that's a stiletto, which we'll store in our stash. Task added, late for dinner. Oh, okay. And some fruit. All right, well, we'll keep more of that on. The other thing to note is that it's possible that we can make some... Yes! Duke's own beef loaf. It takes a fruit, a vegetable, and a meat. And now it's something that gives 10 endurance instead of 5, as well as plus 2 might, which is really good. You can also cook a chicken for constitution instead of might, and a stew. Well, let's craft one of these might ones. Boom, excellent. And then let's say one of these chicken ones. Sweet. Oh, we actually have enough stuff to make some potions as well. Wizard's double, plus 20% deflection until damage. So basically one mirror image that you bait someone else to, to hit you on. And, um, more move speed. I don't care about the moon speed. Move speed. One of these wizard double potions might be a good idea. Oh, actually, making one dose makes two of them. Alright, so we'll go ahead and craft that. Cool. Alright, that sounds like it might be kind of handy to have around. Oh, I didn't realize it takes this stuff out of my inventory as well. So we'll get a double stack going on. And maybe next time we get in a big fight, we'll be ready to use some of these resources. Let's go ahead and uh, stash the rice. As you wish. Okay. Oh, there's another dead body over here. Can we reach here somehow? Oh, yeah, there is something going on here. Quick save. I shouldn't be doing all this quick save abuse. I think it removes some of the drama in the game. On the other hand, I like not dying. I think the wolves, the young wolves, aren't going to be much of a problem. I mean, we're definitely taking some amount of, um,. Endurance damage, and our health is being dropped a little bit. We may not want to go in there. We can always just come back here when we've got someone else. Soloing this may not be our path to victory. Oh, what's this? Oh, these aged walls appear to have once encircled the entire glade. Only a small fragment remains, and the stairs leading to the top of the structure have crumbled away. Examine the wall more closely. Heavy bricks are slick with moss, presenting a hindrance to climbing. The stones themselves seem sturdy enough. Given the right tools, one might easily reach the top. I don't have athletics, and I don't think I... I don't have climbing tools. I'm going to leave. We can get a grappling hook later on, though. So we're going to have to come back here for a couple of things. All right, let's just leave. We'll go to uh, the Gilded Vale. And before we go into the Gilded Vale, we're going to put a cut in this video. But next time, we will see what the town has to offer us, including coming back here with some extra people. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.